So I've just decided I'm not going to pronounce the customer name because I can't pronounce it properly, but you all guys know who I'm referring to. At least this is, no, I can try to pronounce it, but don't laugh at me. It's called Boots or something like that, close enough, I think. And it's super, super famous in the Nordic region. I think possibly, have you ever used it? Never been, really? I mean, I've spent a couple of days at this hotel, and there, there is, and it has a wonderful fitness room. And I'm not sure for how many times, you know, when you go in a hotel, you always get, usually in the fitness room, they have a couple of screens. So while you run, you can look at news. And I think I saw three, four times the commercial from Boots and the spring sales happening soon. Okay. <laughs> yes, possibly. <laughs> yeah. So, quick introduction, since it seems you sort of don't know what, <laughs> what this company does. Uh, very easily, they sell clothes. They have a few brands and uh, they sell clothes for men, women and, uh, and child. And they are extremely famous in, uh, in the Nordics. Like also, if you have a look at their website from Italy, the language, the available languages are English, and then there will be Swedish, Norwegian, Icelandic, and um, I think Danish, and nothing else. So this is really some, I mean, that's a good indicator of where the market is mostly based. Uh, just to give you a few numbers, they are a, a Swedish uh, company founded in 2006, and nowadays they count something like 190 people coming from 24 different parts of the world. That's not really important for the presentation itself, but I really like when company have a lot of diversity in it, because I do believe it's one of the key points of big success. In 2016, they got something like 1.6 billion uh, Swedish kroner in a renewal, and all of this was made possible using simply three, four varnish servers. Three, four, it's mostly because it depends if it's Black Friday, if it's spring sale, or if they are during one of the peak season. Okay, let's start with this. So, now we have the picture. Boots.com is a commerce web, e-commerce website. They pay our bills selling clothes, okay? And when they first reach out to us, they made it clear that they were trying to cash as much as possible. They wanted to be fast and want to have a slim architecture because compared to other e-commerce websites, their architecture is super, super, super easy and they didn't want to have a caching software which would have brought more complexity to their architecture. So they first uh, approached us and as any other e-commerce website, one of the major ch challenges was caching dynamic content. So there is a little bit of branding here because as you might notice, there is, I'm really fond of this brand, I'm not going to mention it. But those rectangles here, do you remember when we talk about ESI and personal user uh, content? Okay, this is me being in Italy. I've picked like Swedish language because we are in Sweden today. And I've reviewed a few of the the objects, a few of the clothes they have uh, in the in their market. So that's definitely user based. I was not logged in nor nothing. Most likely they have assigned me a possible cookie or something like that. And eventually on the web on the on the page, uh, Boots.com made me notice. Hey, you have checked out those items. Maybe you want to buy them or possibly you will eventually want to check something else from this brand. That's definitely user specific. That's where you will most likely want to log in or potentially check what, what you have in your basket. And those items, I haven't really checked, but I sort of expect each of them to be a different fragment. So in this page, I can see at least one, two, let's say three, four, five, at least five ESI fragments, okay? And this was one, back in 2006 was one of the major challenges because they were not, they were looking also, well, they were checking out what Varnish software could uh, provide and together they were, 
as any other company, I would say, they were also checking out other possibilities. And this was a turning point. Vanish Software and Vanish Plus was able to actually uh, cache dynamic content while other caching solutions were not. So, well, so they moved to Vanish Plus, and why have they chosen us? Those were just a few of the, the winning points. We are actually going through each of them in detail, like now, because once they moved to Vanish <coughs> Plus, they got, of course, advanced caching which in their scenario means being fast, being slim, and being able to cache everything. Dynamic content, no matter if it was user-specific or not. Support, um, we're going through that again a little bit later. Monitoring tools and VHA, availability of content. So advanced caching, you probably, all of you, most possibly, know what VCL is, and they had quite a lot of VCL customization. VCL stands for Varnish Configuration Language, and it's extremely flexible, and if you're an e-commerce website, you can basically, the e-commerce website or any other website, you can define your own caching rule as you like it. You can change your VCL. So for instance, if it's Thursday, and if just a few hours before Black Friday, you can possibly change your VCL. Not suggested without testing, but you can do it if you want to. Uh, as I said, dynamic content again. Please do remember that back in 2006, we were, I'm not sure if we were supporting ESI or Ready or if it happened a little bit later. But nowadays, we're also supporting parallel ESI, which obviously gives you a, a huge boost in terms of performance. Support. Uh, I'm extremely proud of this, mostly because I spend a lot of time on support and I'm happy to work with the rest of the crew. But when they first approached us, one of the requirements was we definitely need to have some experts looking after us, especially during a big season, because you, so don't, you really want to be prepared for any inconvenience, especially if you're in e-commerce. If your money server goes down during Black Friday, you're losing a lot of money. And the Black Friday happens in Q4, and Q4 is the end of the year, so that's terrible, guys. Monitoring. So if you're looking for caching, you most likely can simply deploy the open source project. But think about it. If you don't have good monitoring tools, you will just end up spending a lot of time trying to understand what's going on with your Varnish instance. And as long as you have a single Varnish instance in place, that's, that could be fine. I mean, you spend some time uh, trying to understand what Varnish log is actually, um, what's the outcome of Varnish log. You spend some time understanding its statistics in Varnish stat. But what if you have three, four, five, six Varnish servers in place? That's really not easy. You will just end up looking at several screens at the same time and not really understand what's going on and what's not. So one of the reasons why Boots.com decided to use uh, Vanish Plus is the monitoring tool we do provide. We have mostly this VAC, which stands for Vanish Administration Console, and it will allow it will let you administrate several Vanish instances altogether, and VCS, which stands for Vanish Costume Statistics, which will obviously output some statistics based on your flavor. This obviously brought to reduce its staff time, because if you have good monitoring tools, you will simply have to have a look at your monitor tools once in a while, and if something is going terribly wrong, again, you can fall back onto the on to Varnish software support. That's a uh, Varnish administration console interface, just to let you understand more or less what it does. If any of you is interested in this, we can probably set up a demo happening in the break in in the next uh, 10 minutes uh, or so. It's fairly easy to work with, or at least it's more user-friendly than the usual Vanish log or Vanish stat. It really takes a lot of time to understand what's going on and what's not in there. Fourth point, uh, my colleague Francisco gave uh, a very good presentation about VHA, but for an e-commerce website, that's even more important because you do want to have page replicated 
uh, among your uh, varnish nodes, but you do also want to have consistency because most likely you're going to change like the fashion, for instance. Fashion will change from winter to spring fashion. Fashion will change from country to, a, a diff to another country because, spring, uh, because summer in Italy is not the same as summer in Norway. So you possibly want to have two different fashion uh, clothes in there. So you want your cache to be consistent. You don't want to cache different objects for the same type of request. Otherwise, that's, that won't really generate any money for you running an e-commerce. So to be fair, um, boots.com is the usual, more or less the usual e-commerce website. And now we're getting into part two, which I haven't really mentioned, because when I pr first prepared this presentation, I really thought, okay, the, the use case is interesting, but let's try to come up with general tips for everyone with an e-commerce website or something similar to it. As I said, I spent a lot of time on support, and lately, the most requested review were coming from e-commerce website. And they, re they all requested something like, okay, we have six varnish servers at the moment, but in the next year, we expect to grow exponentially. Or within three months, we expect to sell, we, we expect a huge peak, and we want to make sure our architecture can actually go through that peak. And we want to be able to scale up and down based on our needs. So I've just decided, okay, I should probably just come up with a few tips and uh, how the usual e-commerce uh, architecture looks like today. That's a very easy architecture. We all buy through mobile. At least I buy from mobile mostly and not from desktop, mostly because I'm traveling. Hence, we do have a mobile sitting here and that's me buying uh, clothes or, uh, I don't know, train tickets, planes, whatever I have to buy. We have several varnish nodes, and in this scenario, we do only have a single backend server. Most likely, if you are an e-commerce website or a media website, you will have a web server which generates content for a specific region and uh, another web server generating mostly commercial content or advertisement or something like that. So in this scenario, it's important for you to understand that's an architecture that scales, as you can see. We have varnish nodes here, and in this scenario, we are running MSC. Um, MSC, it's a massive store and engine, and it's not strictly important for you to run MSC if you are in e-commerce, but in general, it's, uh, it's nice to have if you have, um, if you got a cache a data set bigger than 50 gigabytes, or if you want persistent in place. Possibly, if it's Black Friday, you're very much interested in persistence. So if for any reason your vanish restarts or dies, you, don't, you do not lose your cache. We have replication happening between each node, and that's again to have consistency and make sure, and also to have less connection happening on the backend side. And again, guys, you most likely are going to handle credit card credentials, so you will have to, you will need uh, TLS and SSL both on the client side and backend side because you don't really want to leak those kind of information. So, is there anyone having some sort of architecture in place? Okay, maybe it's right. <laughs> no, but that's. Um, well, I'm not saying it's 100% correct, but that's usually how it works uh, uh, with e-commerce. With e plus, they, you also have like micro, Varnish Plus uh, instances dedicated to microservices, Varnish Plus instances dedicated to commercial, and Varnish Plus instances dedicated to like one sitting in the front and one sitting yeah. in the back to make sure that everything is actually cached. We have it like that. Yes. So yes. yes. Well. Thank you for answering <laughs> me. So, all in all, coming from a uh, um, support point of view, strongly suggested to have in place parallel ESI 
apparently no one is using ESI here. So maybe just forget about parallel at the moment and start using uh, ESI. <coughs> so you will be able to cache fragments uh, of, of your page. VHA for consistency and availability. Monitoring tools. And those are the usual, like that's uh, the, the usual three tips or at least the, the, the three bullet points everyone running an e-commerce website has for. But then there is have a cache and validation plan. If you have persistence in, persistence in place and you do not have a cache and validation plan and you suddenly cache the whole uh, fashion clothes for winter and uh, in Sweden is 24 degrees, no one is ever going to buy clothes from you for the, for the summer. And if you have persistence, you're not really sure how to get rid of content from your cache. If you do not have a, a cache invalidation plan, you're basically losing money. And please do not throw a piece of VCL here and there and just put everything in production, production without testing it. Because then I'm, pre I'm pretty sure you will try to reach out <laughs> to us and uh, asking what's, going, well, what's wrong here. And then I will eventually let you, let you know what's wrong with your VCL setup. Please feel free to test. I gave some other presentation about varnish test and we do have a lot of material about varnish test. Check it out before you throw new VCL in, uh, in your VCL configuration. And then feel free to reach out to us. Questions? Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.